There have just been record-breaking numbers of divorces and women, and women everywhere are just waking up. The woman had to prove that he cheated on her or had an affair to get a divorce. But the spouse alleging fault must provide convincing evidence. Their word alone is not enough. They have to prove abuse or infidelity or something like that in order to get a divorce. And I'm like, should we tell them? Actually, I really regret doing that. If the relationship didn't work, ladies, it didn't work. Move on and get a job. Hey guys, welcome back to More to Life. Now, before I get into this video, I ask that you like, comment, subscribe. Also, smash that notification bell just to be sure you get all my videos as soon as I release them. Let's get right into this. Florida Family Law Tip of the Day. Governor DeSantis did sign the alimony reform bill yesterday, so effective today, July 1st. Permanent alimony is a thing of the past in Florida. In addition, it limits the amount of alimony the recipient can get to their reasonable need or 35% of the difference of the party's net incomes, whichever is less. Some conservative leaders want to make it harder to get divorced. Seriously. No-fault divorce laws have contributed to lower national rates of intimate partner violence, particularly against women. Some conservative leaders want to reinstate barriers to divorce by requiring proof of abuse or infidelity. In all 50 states, Americans have the legal rights to end their marriages without having to prove wrongdoing by a spouse. But some conservative lawmakers are wanting to do away with that. The first no-fault divorce law passed in 1969 under the approval of President Ronald Reagan, who was the governor of California at the time. In the following decades, no-fault divorce gradually became the law of the land across the nation, with New York becoming the final state to legalize it in 2010. The passage of these laws have correlated with lower rates of violence across the board. Prior to these laws, many partners, primarily women, found themselves trapped in abusive marriages because a lot of these things can be really hard to prove. And even if she was granted a divorce, she'd be barred from remarrying or receiving any assets in the split if proof of mistreatment by her spouse was deemed insufficient. Even though divorce rates have ticked down in recent years, people think that it has led to more divorces, which is some kind of moral failing. A lot of these opinions come from men. This year, Republican Senator from Oklahoma filed a state Senate bill that would eliminate the practice and force Oklahomans seeking divorce to prove their case with clear and convincing evidence of wrongdoing by a spouse. Ben Carson, a potential Trump VP pick, has also expressed support for this. So they're going after birth control, IVF, and now no-fault divorce? Yikes. Read more over at Iowa Starting Line. Thanks for watching. More and more conservatives are attacking divorce as the next way to curtail women's freedoms. Let me explain the latest. Okay, quick background, the U.S. uses a no-fault divorce system. Basically, before the no-fault divorce system, which came out in the 70s, you used to have to prove abuse or infidelity or something like that in order to get a divorce. But now you can just say that you have irreconcilable differences and you can be granted a divorce. No-fault divorce is obviously good public policy. It's bad public policy for the government to force couples to like non-consensually stay in a marriage or to second guess why you no longer want to be in this marriage. But it's important to note that no-fault divorce had particularized benefits for women who initiate nearly 70% of divorces. When it emerged in the 70s, it was credited with bolstering women's economic independence and providing safer routes for abuse survivors, and it contributed to a whopping 20% decline in the female unalive rate. So naturally, a bunch of conservative men want to end no-fault divorce. They say that too many people are getting a divorce because it's too easy to get one, and that if we made it harder to get a divorce, that these couples would just work out their problems and go on to live a happy marriage. Again, this is obviously bad public policy for the reasons I mentioned, but also backlogged family law courts do not have the capacity to go back to an at-fault divorce system and like sift through people's detailed reasons as to why they deserve a divorce. This is just one part of a larger scheme by the conservative party to roll back women's freedoms and our ability to equally participate in society. They've gutted abortion rights. They are doing everything they can to force women to perform non-consensual reproductive labor at the risk of her own health, life, and dignity. They are coming after birth control. All of these public policy initiatives have the demonstrated consequence of decreasing women's economic independence and their ability to participate equally in the public sphere, including politics. Of course, I understand the outrage and the shock over the horrible things that this football player said, but at the same time, let's keep in mind that he articulated the conservative party's platform and their aspirations. He's not like a one-off extremist. That's an entire party's active platform. I'm the feminist lawyer. I'm a litigator who has a background in gender policy and reproductive rights. Comment. Let me know if you have any questions or anything I can help with. What's going on? 
has gotten totally out of control. Think about everything. Think about the way everything is nowadays. How men are broken now. These laws are already starting to pass in Florida and they're going to pass in other states. Now, of course, this is being done for laws. So truly, I, I truly don't care what's happening. Why is that? Why don't I care? I put myself in a position to not be involved in the laws that take place in a country. I love the country. I love the laws in the country. But some of the things that happen totally pitch you out. Think about it. If you're a man that believes in marriage and is getting tired of women jumping out of marriage every chance they get, that's all you see. So it's a new day and you know what that means. Republicans have found yet another thing that they want to do away with. And that is no-fault divorce. In the past three weeks, five states have introduced laws to outlaw no-fault divorce. For those of you who don't know, until relatively recently, the only way for a woman to push for divorce from their husband was if the man was at fault in some way. In many situations, the woman had to prove that he cheated on her or had an affair to get a divorce. Or that he was physically abusive. Men, on the other hand, have always been able to have no-fault divorce and leave their wives. So states gave everybody the right to a no-fault divorce. But now Republicans are saying they don't like that. And they're saying that the only reason that a woman should be able to leave their husband is once again proving that he is at fault in some way, citing either abuse or an affair. So in conclusion, they want to go back to the days where women are forced to remain married to men that they don't want to be married to. I'm pretty sure there's a word for that. You see what she said? Forced to marry to men they don't want to be married to. That's not all that's happening here. They're trying to come in and see if they can solve some of the issues. But obviously, they see they can't. Look at the way you're saying it. Oh, they're trying to force. So woman is just supposed to say, oh, I don't like you anymore. Goodbye. Sayonara. Oh, he hit me. I don't like you anymore. He's abusive. That's why no fault divorce is in play, but he's abusive though. So now all of a sudden, all these men are abusive. So you're saying 100% of the situations in marriage, the men are abusive? Complete lies. The women are lying, being conniving, doing whatever they can do just for a payday at the expense of some man's pockets. Something really concerning is happening amongst a certain group of lawmakers and thought leaders in the U.S. There is a push to do away with no-fault divorce. And from the perspective of a family law attorney, a healthy divorce coach, and someone who prides myself on empowering women, I'm going to tell you why this is a really big deal. But first, let me explain what a no-fault divorce is. This is a legal mechanism that has been around for 50 years and exists in all 50 states that allows a person to unilaterally get a divorce based on irreconcilable differences differences without having to prove their spouse committed a fault such as cheating or abuse. As you can imagine, it can be difficult to prove fault grounds because marital misdeeds often happen behind closed doors in he said, she said situations. The level of difficulty in proving fault grounds varies from state to state, but the spouse alleging fault must provide convincing evidence. Their word alone is not enough. So why is this a big deal? The no fault divorce option makes divorce far easier to obtain and possibly even more important than that, it makes a peaceful, amicable divorce far more likely because you don't have to publicly throw your spouse's character under the bus to get a divorce. Now, the reason this will disproportionately affect women is because 70% of divorces are, in, are initiated by women. There's the problem. Listen to this clip by a political commentator who advocates for the end of no-fault divorce. It's hard to think of any other situation in which a contract can be broken for no reason by either party without the consent of the other and entirely without cause. Maybe I'm crazy, but the person you agree to live with, be intimate with, have children with, handle finances with is probably the number one factor that influences your mental and physical health and the overall quality of your life. The contract that you entered with that person should not be held to the same standard as the contract you have with your cell phone provider. Here's a clip of another political commentator and advocate for the end of no fault divorce. And no, this was not uh, my choice. 
my then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. This man is blatantly saying that he doesn't believe his wife should be able to leave him unless he allows her to do so. Of those 70% of divorces that are initiated by women, the top reasons for divorce include, one, women are more likely than men to feel like they are being held back in their marriages because of a disproportionate domestic workload. Two, women have a larger emotional burden than men to make sure everyone in the family is emotionally supported. And three, women are no longer willing to tolerate bad behavior like cheating and abuse because they are not nearly as financially reliant on men as they were historically due to more women entering the workforce. The push to end no-fault divorce, it is a direct attack on women having the freedom, sovereignty, and agency to leave a situation that is not healthy for them to be in. You, you know, uh, I truly get it. I see where the woman is coming from somewhat. I will say somewhat, not fully. I don't because so many women are lying, right? But this is what happens to a lot of guys. They'll come home and wonder why the police came to the house, right? So imagine you're thinking everything's fine. No arguments with your wife ever. Yes, there are tons of situations where this happens. No arguments with your wife ever. That's like right now, right? Me and my wife, Kay. We haven't argued for months. <laughs> and then one day some cops come to my door. I'm like, what are you guys doing my door? Well, they're like, okay, we want you to stand over here. Then they serve me. The first they make sure I'm not violent because they came over because they've heard they came over for a violent report that I'm dealing with a violent, a violent man, right? So, and then they serve you with some papers. That's for me to disown some things and also for me to get out of the house. Why do I have to get out of the house? Because now it's her home because she said I was abusive. Where I'm at now, that doesn't happen, but it happens there. And that's why the guy said it, not because of what she said, oh, because she should be able to tell me. She, I should know if she has to leave me. Yes, a guy he does have a right to know. That's his wife. She, the way she said, he shouldn't have a right, though. Feminist to the core. Every man should have a right to know. That's his wife. So, yes, him sitting in the house for years with his wife should know if she's divorcing him. He shouldn't be shocked and surprised and then kicked out of his home and serve papers to stay out of his home for abuse. And he never even smoke a punch at her. This is what's happening now. So conservatives are declaring war on divorce. And I'm like, should we tell them that it was their boy who signed it into law to begin with? This is the story about Ronald Reagan launching modern divorce law that you definitely never knew. So back in the day, getting a divorce was hard for everyone. And then it became hard just for women because obviously. To get legally divorced, you had to prove in a court of law that you had been wronged in some specific ways. So triple A, adultery, abuse, abandonment, etc. Some Republican lawmakers are trying to run that back. I just did a long video about it over on the tube. Check it out. But back in the 1940s, famous Hollywood actor Ronald Reagan was married to famous Hollywood actress Jane Wyman. After nine years of marriage, she pulled up to the divorce court and cited extreme mental cruelty, which is one of the common reasons for getting a divorce at the time. He actually cited that politics came between them, but he pulled up and cited that another man came between them. So that was that. Flash forward 20 years, Ronald Reagan is now a Republican. Yes, he was a Democrat before and the governor of California. And he signs the nation's first no-fault divorce law into effect and then snowball all 49 states follow. He said, and I'll read, I believe it is a step towards removing the acrimony and bitterness I don't know what acrimony means, but whatever. Between a couple that is harmful not only to their children, but also to society as a whole. And then he did a full 180 and was like, actually, I really regret doing that. Now we're seeing a growing number of conservatives not just lamenting his move, but trying to change it. Editing divorce laws is literally an official legislative priority of the Texas Republican Party. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson has spoken on his desire to get rid of no-fault divorce. 
Oh, and is it possible that Trump's VP could also be on that bandwagon? You bet your ass, baby. That's one of those things. It's no shame. There's no shame anymore, right? Back in the day, you get divorced. Like, forget all of the laws. Forget the law that Reagan brought in the office. He made a big mistake. He realized it. But take a look at this, right? When you get divorced, all the shame is loaded on your shoulders. Like, I'm just imagining if I had to divorce this woman right here, right now. I've been together with her for 10 years. We just divorcing. Divorcing for something so minuscule. Maybe we had an argument last week. That's what we're divorcing for now. Oh, I didn't know he was like that. I didn't know he was so intense. He's too much for me. I'm not saying, and that's why I said what I said earlier. I'm not saying some women aren't going through the issues because they are, but more so than not, right? There's more women not going through these streams than they are going through these streams. You can act like they're, it's not, but you'd be lying to yourself. And it's fine. We already know. Most of you don't mind lying to yourself and lying to get your way, right? So that's that. But what we have in this day and age, people don't care. You know, I I commend the woman. I don't commend them because it's all low down, good for nothing. Don't, don't have it nowhere around me. Right, women that are just being with a man just because they like him that's more better, actually. And it's wild because it's not right, it's that crazy. Like, the things we're okay with nowadays, it's not better, but it's made to feel that way because of who? Who made it that way? Vox recently released an article detailing how the Christian right would like to get rid of no-fault divorce. No-fault divorce is basically when you want to dissolve your marriage without proving wrongdoing by either party. So no-fault divorces are good because a lot of women are trapped in abusive marriages. And in order to divorce in certain states and jurisdictions, you have to go to your abuser and ask him to sign the paperwork and grant you that divorce. And we all know that's not happening. There was one paragraph in this article that really stood out to me, and that's what I want us to talk about. Opponents of no-fault divorce argue that it is hurting American families and American culture. Hmm. Making divorce too easy causes social upheaval, unfettered dishonesty, lawlessness, violence towards women, war on men, and expendability of children. To devalue marriage is to devalue the family, is to undermine the foundation of a thriving society. Let's discuss this. Social upheaval. These ones, the Project 2025ers, they want the good old days back. And we all know what that means. A war on men. Here's the thing. Men believe that when we have a choice and we don't choose them, that they are being punished. They believe that if we are able to walk away from them and live freely without needing them or wanting them in our lives, that they are being punished. And this is also why we are seeing more violence toward women. To devalue marriage is to undermine the foundation of a thriving society. Y'all, they need more bodies. They need more bodies. If every man does not get a woman that he can drop in the house and put babies in, there will be no more worker bees for them to exploit and abuse. Please read between the lines when you listen to these people speak because they've literally been telling us their plans for us the entire time. And this is a huge part of Project 2025. Please pay attention because this is not a joke. This is not a game. And they are dead serious about trapping us in the house to make us labor slaves and incubators. So I'm sure by now a lot of us have seen that Steven Crowder video of him going on about how he did not consent to his wife leaving him and that he doesn't want to get a divorce, but she is breaking up the family. And then like later on after that, she um, shared a video of him emotionally abusing her and like 
screaming at her. And at the same time, there are now conservative states in the U.S. discussing um, potentially getting rid of no-fault divorce. We're at a really interesting time in history for women. Like right now and over the past few years, there have just been record-breaking numbers of divorces and women initiating those divorces as well as leaving long-term relationships. Like I remember all these news articles coming out during and after like 2020, 2021 pandemic times of all these divorces that happened during and after the pandemic because now that the women are stuck at home with their husbands all the time, they're like, wow, I really don't actually want to be around this person. And women everywhere are just waking up. We're waking up and realizing that we don't need to put up with emotional abuse and we don't need to put up with men who do the bare minimum, who are just constantly using weaponized incompetence to do nothing around the house that basically just want to be married to their mom. And women everywhere are saying, no, thank you. I don't want that anymore. And they're getting divorced. We've also seen a huge number of women in the past few years come out as queer in some capacity. I am one of those statistics. I left my six-year relationship. I was engaged. The only reason we weren't married is because the pandemic canceled our wedding. We were supposed to get married during the pandemic. And at the same time, we're seeing all these news articles about how there's the record-breaking number of single lonely men who can't get a date because women won't put up with it anymore. So I think that it makes total sense that now... There are conservative states that want to get rid of no-fault divorce. They want us to be trapped. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them to go one step further after banning no-fault divorce and making it illegal for adults who aren't married to live together because then, guess what? Housing prices are so high, we have to get married. We have to get married to a man because we can't live on our own. It's honestly terrifying the way that the world is going. It's sad because... You see how <laughs> in both videos, right? The woman is like, yeah, so we have to get married to a man. Think about why guys are not putting in the energy. Guys aren't making their way, aren't fighting through crowds to talk to you, right? Think about it. Men are giving you your distance. You're doing all this screaming and shouting and saying, men are trying to take things away from me. Oh, men are going to give you your distance, even more so than ever, because this is happening. Why do you think the passport bros was such a big thing? And even before basketball bros were a thing, I left. I saw this all coming. I saw this all as it was happening. I've seen this for years. I had to go. 2015, I said bye. I could have been a man stuck in that system dealing with women with that kind of mindset. Why do I want to build something to have it all taken away from me? That's how I felt. Seriously. Why would I? Does it make sense? No. And so now I'm over here showing guys the truth. The conservative assault on individual rights continues. Let's look at no fault divorce. Conservative states, including Texas, of course, are looking at ending no-fault divorce. What is it? No-fault divorce laws allow either party to walk away from an unhappy marriage. There's no need to prove abuse, infidelity, or some other fault. All 50 states have some version of it. California was first in 1969. Researchers have said that the rise of no-fault divorce laws have led to decreases of spousal homicide of women as well as female suicide. More than two-thirds of all heterosexual divorces are initiated by women in the, in the United States. Republicans apparently don't like the ability of a woman to simply leave a marriage because she doesn't want to be married anymore. Republicans say they want to support covenant marriage. They also want to extend the period of time in which a divorce may occur to six months after the date of filing. They want the woman to have to stay around longer. In addition to Texas, you have Louisiana, in Nebraska. Ending no-fault divorce was also considered the, at the Republican National Convention in 2016. Look for that to come up again. Those who say they want to keep the government out of your personal affairs, I'm not sure they really mean it. 
they seem perfectly fine to allow the government into your personal affairs when it fits their agenda. What's next? Ending contraception? Requiring that a woman have sex with her husband whenever he wants it? I don't know. This new law means that permanent alimony has come to an end in Florida. One thing supporters and opponents disagree with regarding this new law is whether it applies to existing alimony agreements. Governor Ron DeSantis signed this bill last night and the new law took effect today. Supporters say that this bill limits how long an ex-spouse would be required to make alimony payments, but supporters also say this would not apply to current agreements. However, opponents say courts could decide this new law could apply to existing alimony agreements, which puts some ex-spouses in a situation where they're unable to support themselves because they were depending on those payments. It's always been important to allow judges to decide what is in the best interest of that family and, of course, of children, if there are children involved in the divorce. And this bill, now law, alongside others that have passed recently, um, pull that process away from the courts and into a more political realm. Republican State Representative John Snyder of Martin County, who approved the bill, says in part, quote, as society changes, we have more households where both spouses work. By eliminating permanent alimony, the bill strikes a good balance between supporting the spouse who might not earn as much income during the marriage while also encouraging self-supporting. Governor DeSantis is getting rid of permanent alimony in Florida. This is a good thing. How many men's lives have been destroyed by having to pay an ex-wife to just not be around? That's right. You have to pay her a salary to go away, and you have to pay that salary with the salary that you get to live your life on. Wow. If the relationship didn't work, ladies, it didn't work. Move on and get a job. After all, all of you fought for the right to have a job, and all of you believe that you're smarter, better, stronger, and faster than we men. So prove it. Go into the workforce and earn your own living. Well, this is going to end the burden, especially on men whose health fails because they're working two jobs to pay alimony and pay their own rent. This is a great move. And ladies, if you don't like it, pick up and leave Florida. There's 49 other states that still have that stupid law in place. The guy's right. That would be the thing to do, but it would cause you to uproot your life and make changes. And most women aren't trying to do that. They want to continue to, I get it with age, but they want to continue to be elderly and receive those extra fringe benefits. While that man is working, he never stopped working. Imagine that. That old man never stopped working and continued to have a job to pay for your divorce. That's what's happening. In Florida, they're stopping that now. But he continued working to just to pay alimony. Why? Because he would probably go to jail for not being able to keep up the payments. Wow. That's going to be stopped now. It's always cheaper to keep her for many men who are in unhappy marriages until now where it's actually cheaper to leave her. It took four tries and nearly 10 years, but Governor Ron DeSantis has finally signed a bill to overhaul Florida's alimony laws and eliminate permanent alimony. DeSantis' approval came a year after he vetoed a similar bill and after the former Governor Rick Scott vetoed similar bills twice. Critics argue that the bill will impoverish older ex-spouses who have been homemakers and rely on alimony payments to survive. Proponents of the bill say it adds clarity and stops ex-spouses from having to continue working long past retirement because they have to keep paying alimony payments. Eliminating permanent alimony has been a highly contentious issue. There it is right here. It's been an issue for the longest time. And guys are starting to get it over with, especially in Florida. Congratulations to y'all for not having to pay alimony for the rest of your life. Let's give the man a clap. Finally. Congratulations to you. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video. And remember, Stephanie, more to life than this.